I'm going to read some of this article that I just came across because as I was reading it, I was thinking that many of you, myself included, have fallen into a life circumstance that is very lonely, though I don't necessarily describe my circumstance as lonely. It's more of this chronic aloneness. I have always been somebody who could spend an awful lot of time alone. But I had the choice if I felt the need to socialize, I had many options. Those options were taken away in 2012. So the protracted period of isolation, an isolation that just kept getting more and more tight, tight. An isolation that I literally could not escape from I I have to say, reading this article, I get, <clears throat> excuse me, I get what Hannah Arendt meant when she wrote in The Origins of Totalitarianism, describing loneliness as the common ground for terror. I think a lot of you will relate to what I will read. Thinkers as early as Aristotle observed that man is by nature a social creature. For this reason, there has been a surge of media attention on the loneliness plague which the information age has wrought. And I will link below to this article in The Guardian. The age of loneliness is killing us literally. For the most social of creatures, the mammalian bee, there's no such thing now as society. And this will be our downfall. And we're witnessing this downfall. Social isolation is as potent a cause of early death as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. A majority of Americans uh, believe a faction wow. of unelected officials is orchestrating policy in Washington, D.C., according I'm going to go on. Um, loneliness is twice as deadly as obesity. Just two paragraphs I'm going to read from this article. Three months ago, we read that loneliness has become an epidemic among young adults. Now we learn that it is just as great an affliction of older people. A study by Independent Age shows that severe loneliness in England blights the lives of 700,000 men, 1.1 million women over 50, and is rising with astonishing speed. The breakdown of family, the, the moral relativism that has so entrenched itself in not only Britain, but the United States, a lot of Western nations where people are defining for themselves what moral behavior is, and even those behaviors that are blatantly immoral, well, the individual gets to decide for themselves whether it is immoral or moral, and generally the individual will decide in their favor and just decide that their, their behavior is moral. And that is also breaking down an awful lot of trust, and without trust, you have nothing. There's no substance to relationships. There's no real connect connection. There's certainly no deep connection. If you can't trust people, you can't deeply connect with them. So, when you're finding that there's almost nobody to trust anymore. You can't find like-minded people. 
You can't find people who take life seriously. And that is evidenced by their willingness to engage in the very many serious problems that we're all facing. All of that breeds loneliness. I don't know how they came across these, these figures because an awful lot of people don't like to admit that they're lonely because they're afraid that that reflects badly upon themselves. And it may have nothing to do with that individual who's lonely. It may have everything to do with that individual who has retained these essential ingredients of being a human being. You could also be in a room with an awful lot of people and still be really lonely because there is no deep connection and there is no trust so you cannot be yourself and that gets into the article that I'm going to be reading in a second but British children no longer aspire to be train drivers or nurses more than a fifth say they just want to be rich wealth and fame are the sole ambitions of 40 percent of those surveyed a government study in June revealed that Britain is the loneliest capital of Europe. We are less likely than other Europeans to have close friends or to know our neighbors. Who can be surprised when everywhere we are urged to fight like stray dogs over a dustbin? We here in the United States, the motto of the baby boomers for a long time, it was the one who dies with the most toys wins. Materialism. It took over. The value of money over everything else has destroyed our social connections. So that is the author's, uh, the author of this article. That's one of the reasons why Britain or the British tend to be far more lonely than other European countries. Stray dogs fighting over a dustbin. And that was a deliberate construction to get us all fighting to get us all materialistic, just striving for more and more money, materials, you know, materialistic things. And that became the predominant focus of certainly Americans and it has destroyed society. Thinkers as early as Aristotle observed that man is by nature a social creature. We are social creatures. We are relational beings. And when we can't find people that we can relate to, that we can connect with. You do enter a circumstance of great loneliness. And most media attention has focused on the health consequences of loneliness. There are health consequences of loneliness. And I know that a lot of you are alone finding it very difficult to recover from the medical issues that you have, finding it very difficult to get to a place of feeling okay. When alone, 
your chances of recovery are less likely. When you have trusting friends and family, then you're far more likely to recover and feel okay. That's a fact. Far less attention has been paid to the social and political consequences of loneliness. But it would be a mistake to overlook the effects loneliness has on political systems. In her classic work, The Origins of Totalitarianism, the philosopher Hannah Arendt described loneliness as the common ground for terror and the essence of totalitarian government. Arendt differentiated loneliness from mere isolation or the absence of people. And she suggested that solitude and loneliness are quite different. In fact, they are opposites, and they are. This distinction is a bit abstract, but Arendt offers an effective description of loneliness in a passage from the origins of totalitarianism. What makes loneliness so unbearable is the loss of one's own self the loss of one's own self, which can be realized in solitude. It is only in solitude. Those periods of self-reflection that one can find their identity. But that identity is confirmed only by the trusting and trustworthy com company of equals. As relational beings, we confirm, we validate each other. And when you fall into isolation, if it's a protracted period of isolation, you can begin to lose that identity. In this situation, man loses trust in himself as the partner of his thoughts and that elementary confidence in the world which is necessary to make experiences at all. Self and world capacity for thought and experience are lost at the same time. Now I will say the words that I just read are absolutely true because I've experienced that. The loss of self. Far too long have I been in this circumstance of great, not great meaning good, but extraordinary, not extraordinary being good, but a period of isolation that has gone on for so long and unable to find those that I could relate to those trusting relationships, I began to lose a whole lot of me. And I realized it is in connection that we maintain our identity. And unless you've had an experience similar to what I am describing, you, you will never understand that. So what we see here is that according to Arendt, loneliness is not the absence of people, but an absence of self-identity, which is attained through companionship and community. But loneliness is preceded by social isolation. And it is in this first stage of isolation where the first seeds of terror and totalitarianism are sown. Terror can rule absolutely only over men who are isolated against each other. So when we look at what has happened to our societies, when we look at the destruction of family and community, 
and everybody fighting one another, even when you are around others, if you can't relate to them, you're still isolated. And it is right in that isolation that tyranny is born. Therefore, one of the primary concerns of all tyrannical government is to bring this isolation about. And we've been socially engineered to be isolated from one another. Isolation may be the beginning of terror. It certainly is its most fertile ground. It always is its result. This isolation is as it were, pre-totalitarian. Its hallmark is impotence insofar as power always comes from men acting together. Isolated men are powerless by definition. Arendt said, this isolation devolves into loneliness, a condition that goes beyond the political realm and corrodes the soul of man. In isolation, man remains in contact with the world as the human artifice. Artifice. Only when the most elementary form of human creativity, which is the capacity to add something of one's own to the common world, is destroyed, isolation becomes altogether unbearable. Isolation then becomes loneliness. While isolation concerns only the political realm of life, loneliness concerns human life as a whole. Totalitarian government, like all tyrannies, certainly could not exist without destroying the public realm of life. That is, without destroying, by isolating men, their political capacities. and we have destroyed the public realm of life. What about churches, the backbone of American community and civic engagement? What about participation in civic organizations? And I understand that those organizations and the church has been taken over so it's good that people have removed themselves from those environments, but they have not replaced it with anything healthy. Instead, we've just gone about our own business. The collapse of community perhaps explains the meteor, meteor, wow, I can hear it in my head and I can't say the word. Yes, explains the rise of social media. The problem, of course, is that social media seems to be doing more to divide people than unite them. Or in Aaron's words, isolate humans against each other. All of this invites an important question. If Americans do not find ways to restore its waning social capital in meaningful ways, are we laying the seeds for authoritarianism? Those seeds were laid a long time ago. They're bearing fruit. And unless individuals, again, those individuals in the aggregate, do the work necessary to to do everything that they can to instill trust in their relationships trust in their communities and begin to be real living 
honest lives, speaking honestly, that is the foundation for all good things to happen. It is trust. Trust is fundamental. It is the foundation. And without that, we will never get anywhere. And we will continue to destroy each other. <laughs>